L'Amérique abandonnée est devenue une marque créée il y a près de 20 ans par Matthew Christopher, diplômé d'une école de photographie en Pennsylvanie. Aujourd'hui, c'est depuis son domicile de Philadelphie qu'il part pour quatre jours d'exploration urbaine. Peint ou photographié, il a toujours été fasciné par la représentation des ruines. Avec le temps, l'Estet est devenu un observateur avisé de la situation économique et sociale de son pays. Il y a beaucoup d'abandonnés dans la ville de Pennsylvanie, mais je dirais que beaucoup d'autres états, particulièrement dans l'Est Coast ou à travers la Rust Belt, ont abandonné des bâtiments dans eux. La Rust Belt, c'est la ceinture de rouille, cette région du nord-est des USA que l'on appelait avant la Manufacturing Belt, la ceinture des usines, tombée à l'abandon ces 50 dernières années. Can you imagine how noisy this would have been? So right now we're at the former Bethlehem Steel Complex. This was uh, one of the largest steel works in the United States. Steel was one of the backbones of Pennsylvania industry. I mean, along with uh, coal and textile manufacturing, uh, this was really what was the, the core component of the state's economy. This was a place that built skyscrapers and built battleships and uh, quite a lot of American cities and, and um, infrastructure, really. At this point, they've turned it into a sort of multi-purpose project where you have a casino, you have arts buildings, you have uh, public broadcasting, and uh, they also have done Uh, really nice things like this high line along here where you can view the, uh, the stacks of the, the steelworks. Parce qu'il préfère prendre le temps de comprendre les lieux où il va plutôt que de courir après la photo inédite, il ne veut pas être associé au milieu des urbex les explorateurs urbains qui entrent souvent par effraction dans les bâtiments abandonnés. À chaque étape, il a rendez-vous avec quelqu'un sur place, souvent des retraités, comme ici à Salzbourg, où il vient photographier un ancien moulin à farine. Since it was closed in the 1960s, it's been really untouched. I mean, you can see the machinery is in fantastic condition. To find it intact, not destroyed, not pulled apart, uh, those are things that are very, very rare and very special. There's a, a lot of uh, sentimental attachment to this building, right? So there's a story to be told here that if it was demolished, sadly, that story couldn't be told any longer. So it's uh, important to have that tie to the past. C'est un endroit où Matthew aime faire venir les groupes de photographes amateurs qu'il encadre. Les workshops sont tendance, ils font désormais partie de son travail comme ses livres et la vente de tirages. He's bringing people from all over the uh, eastern coast, people from Maine down to Carolinas coming here to see what we have. So that that's nice. We really enjoy that. Maybe America doesn't always have the uh, the the reputation for caring about its past, but I think when you start looking at it more in a town by town and an individual level, you find there actually are people that are working really hard to save it and care very much about it. Many of the places that you go, more and more, they're kind of becoming uh, Disney-fied, you know, and people are looking for something that has that honesty to it, but then, like I said, it becomes sort of packaged, consumerized, and and uh, then you have to find something else.
Mais la mode de l'urbex n'est pas sans conséquence. Le vandalisme est devenu un fléau. Mathieu tient à préciser qu'il ne rapporte jamais rien à part des photos. C'est un de ses amis qui a trouvé cet endroit grâce à des images satellites accessibles en ligne. Une collection privée de trolleybus et de tramways. I was very careful to keep this place secret. When I posted pictures of it, I went so far as to change the numbers on the streetcars so that people couldn't look up online sales databases of them. And you have these uh, people called rail fans that are really into railroad cars, and they found out about this place. They started talking amongst themselves on online forums. Then urban explorers found out about it, and they started, uh, one or two people in particular, really started uh, publicizing the place. Il n'y a plus grand chose à faire pour sauver la collection, sauf à laisser s'amuser les visiteurs. Certains sont des artistes, mais pas tous. There's a level of talent that was in that. And that, you know, that one right there, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to set aside and say I don't have any issue with that one. But when you look at some of the other ones where people are just spray painting swastikas and penises and, you know, racist stuff or whatever, like swear words to impress their 13-year-old friends, like, that's terrible. Et dans cette Amérique profonde qui regorge de patrimoine, il y a aussi les fameux diners que l'on essaye aujourd'hui de copier. Mais celui-là est dans son jus de viande hachée, comme ses clients. Et quand le journaliste français pose une question, la réponse est croustillante. The French president wife. He's all she all, right? But she's they're happy. Are they happy? A place like this would have been um the kind of place you would have seen before that proliferation of the sort of faceless uh globalized uh industries and restaurants and things like that. If you looked at a map of Pennsylvania, we'd be right about in the center. This was uh, originally more of a prosperous area, and I think now it's not, um, it's, it's, uh, it's not awful in terms of the economy, but it's not great either. So. La désindustrialisation a durement frappé les villes moyennes comme Wilkes-Barre. 86 000 habitants dans les années 30, 40 000 aujourd'hui. We're coming up to the shrine right now. So that's it right there. I think very impressive building. La ville avait ses groupes d'influence comme les Shriners, une structure proche de la franc-maçonnerie, devenue puissante au point de construire cet incroyable bâtiment aux allures de mosquée. Hey Matthew, good to meet you. Good to meet you as well. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much for coming. Oh, you bet, you bet. It was not built to serve uh, as a religious purpose but the Shriners when they formed the Shriners organization it was based on Arabic mystique this building is probably the most spectacular building uh, that the Shriners have built that is in that Moorish architectural tradition so that's why we've got to save it <laughs> on y retrouvait la bonne société locale prospère et misogyne in some senses, like a lot of the secret societies like the Shriners and the Masons and everything had a lot of their rituals and everything. So it actually is, I think, a very interesting uh, point in American history where they had these kind of uh, mostly guys clubs where they would have all the secret rites and everything. And, um, you know, that, that period is largely over now in a lot of senses. I mean, um, I don't think younger people really join them. People don't think about being a member like they used to. You know, nowadays you can be a member of a group online. You don't have to go to a building or go to a meeting, you know. My father brought me to my very first opera in this building when I was a little girl. And so now I'm coming back to the area and working on saving it. And I can't think of anything more optimistic than that. 
Son rêve est de l'ouvrir aux visiteurs et les travaux de restauration vont commencer. It's one of the fastest growing segments of, um, of tourism is heritage tourism. And we just have such an untapped wealth here of heritage, so we want to exploit it. <laughs> That's part of what it means to be an American, is always looking forward to the future, knowing that we have the capability in our hands to do whatever it is that we want to do, and we just got to go out and do it. Il aime se retrouver seul dans ses espaces et réfléchir au sens de son travail. I, I can't entirely say that it's an anti-Instagram approach because nobody takes photos to not share them. I think part of the whole point of them is to share an experience that you're having, isn't it? But um, I would say maybe the difference between um, Instagram is that it's just such a rapid pace of image consumption that they all become meaningless. La prospérité, elle s'affichait aussi dans les églises, comme ici à Chester, dans la banlieue de Philadelphie. If you see the town itself, it's really financially struggling. It's sad because they actually have a lot of really great architecture, and you can kind of see where it was prosperous at one time. And I, I think sometimes those can be the most interesting places. Are we? Au classement des villes américaines en fonction du nombre de meurtres, Chester est numéro 2. Pas de quoi être rassuré en entrant ici. When you look around and you see the woodwork in this place and the stained glass windows and the, the sort of or, sort of ornamentation on the pews and everything, um, it's clearly a very beautiful building, um, even after being out of use for 40 years at this point, right? A yeah. little, little yeah. over 40 yeah. years. It was opened in May of 1896, the first service, and it was the early 80s. It stopped being a church. It, it shows their great wealth and the the, the and the power of everything, but it's very religious too. So it's like a combination of both of those things. This building was going to be demolished. We had the vision to understand that this building had to be saved. So we did, we, we got it from the Presbytery for a dollar. I think that the emphasis on this building is community and what we want to do to uplift this community and bring people to a place where they can enjoy life. There's so much, you know, so much other things going on in this city particularly right now. There's a lot of crime, there's a lot of drugs, there's a lot of all kinds of things, uh, you know, that, that need to be addressed and are never really addressed. They're addressed here and there spottily, but that's one of our goals too, is to be able to have like life classes and things like that to help the population and and raise them up. <laughs> un jour peut-être, les habitants de Chester reprendront le chemin de l'église, redevenu un lieu de vie pour une population elle aussi laissée à l'abandon. En Pennsylvanie comme ailleurs à travers le monde, les promoteurs immobiliers s'intéressent de plus en plus aux anciennes usines. À Easton, on y fabriquait des tasses. I don't consider it an abandoned building. I consider it an underutilized building. So we have I've retained architects, um, engineers. We're doing the environmental work to do the cleanup. We know that in the building there is asbestos and lead-based paint, and you can see on the floor and on the, on the floor on the walls and the ceilings you can see asbestos in the building. Even if you were using the term abandoned, I think any property that is out of use or not currently in use represents an opportunity, of course.
Wanted to show you this. I think it's really fun. That's email's ancestor right there. Um, these pneumatic tubes would take messages throughout the building, and they're still uh, pretty much fully intact. So this is where they'd come out of, and that's where you'd uh, put your message in to go elsewhere in the building. New York ou Philadelphie sont à peu plus d'une heure d'ici, ce qui permettra de transformer l'usine en de magnifiques lofts pour une clientèle urbaine de jeunes qui souhaitent vivre différemment de leurs parents. People like to be part of a history, and part of that history is living in an older building that had some other use that's been repurposed for the use that they're living in, the residential. I think the private house is a bit boring. People that will come here, they'll live in this apartment, they'll lock their door, and they'll travel for a month. And they know that the building is not going to fall down, they know the building is safe, they know that somebody's going to maintain it. They don't have to worry about mowing grass, they don't have to worry about shoveling snow or anything else. Um, and they're living a life that is full, but it's not wedded to their real estate. Gentrification has a lot of positive qualities. Si à proximité des grandes villes, les bobos vont remplacer les ouvriers, en Pennsylvanie, il reste quelques lieux qui ont conservé une forte identité sociale. La ville de Scranton est connue dans l'histoire pour les six mois de grève de 150 000 mineurs de charbon en 1902 et sur sa place centrale trône la statue de John Mitchell, un des pères du syndicalisme américain. It is a 1929 Model A Ford Roadster. Well, I mean, uh, 1929 is the year of the Great Depression, and certainly there are a lot of parallels today, especially the widening gap between uh, the haves and the have-nots, the ultra-wealthy and, and the people that are really struggling. In this quartier autrefois ouvrier, an enfant devenu célèbre est passé par là tous les jours pour aller à l'école. Joe Biden, le vice-président de Barack Obama, un des candidats démocrates à l'investiture, est né à Squanton en 1942. Biden lived right off this two streets over, up on the hill. That's where he was born. Right. Well, he, lived, he left about the time he got out of high school. So when he grew up, he would have been within a five-minute walk of the factory. I mean, he has not been working class for a very long time. But, <laughs> but, but, he, would but he came from working class. Yes, he did. Mm -mm. It's important. He was the vice president. Pretty hard to call him blue collar now. All right. Car dans sa campagne pour l'investiture, Joe Biden met en avant ses origines. If you grow up in an area that has a factory and uh, nearby and you're walking to school and you know it's it's you're going to have a better maybe a better understanding of the people than uh, that that you would theoretically be representing than, than somebody would who grew up in wealth from the moment they were born. I would try and get all my lines straight like that. Um, I tend to like a, a kind of um, more of a, a documentary style. Um, and, and that to me is because uh, it's, it's more about the, the places themselves rather than my editing. One of the things that um, I always stuck with me in terms of editing is that theoretically people should not look at your photo and notice the editing first thing. Uh, they should be looking at the picture, not what you did to it. Ce voyage avec Matthew Christopher à travers la Pennsylvanie abandonnée va se terminer dans un des lieux les plus impressionnants, une ville entière quasiment à l'abandon. Brownsville était autrefois prospère. Un film d'après-guerre montre sa vitalité, 
grâce notamment au charbon. Aujourd'hui, presque tous les commerces sont fermés, sauf l'armurerie, installée dans l'ancienne synagogue. Sa population a été divisée par cinq, et parmi les 2000 habitants qui y vivent encore, il y a Nina et Beth. Elles nous reçoivent dans le joli petit musée de la ville, et avec elles, on aimerait croire à une possible renaissance. Mais comment remonter la pente quand tout s'est effondré, à commencer par l'hôpital. L'abandon, les promesses non tenues depuis des années, à force, la Westbelt s'est jetée dans les bras de celui qui avait le discours le plus démagogique. Là où les démocrates et les républicains faisaient jeu égal au temps d'Obama en 2016, les deux tiers des électeurs du comté ont voté Trump comme Beth. In 2016, I think that it actually helped open up a lot of um, our eyes and stuff and say enough is enough. We're tired of being promised things and no follow through. We're tired of being told things and not really seeing any, you know, solid movement forward as a, you know, society and as the American people. And what will be... Que sera 2020? I hope 2020 will be the same and I think we will, I hope that we will continue to progress forward. I'm not happy with the political situation at all. I think it's a very frightening time and I feel like part of the reason that I, I started this project was because um, I felt like these places are the canaries in the coal mine so to speak. They're a, an alarm, they're a warning bell that things are going wrong and that uh, the places that they're located in need help, they need acknowledgement, they need sympathy, they don't need judgment, they don't need uh, being ignored. And that was something that from the very beginning was an important component of what I did. But the problem is now I feel like, you know, the, uh, the little trash fire, now the whole house is burning, it feels like. So um, I think it's in some ways a, a, a terrifying time because uh, everybody's so fragmented and, and there hasn't really been any sense of people coming together to deal with these things. People are more adversarial to each other than ever. Au départ, il faisait cela juste pour l'esthétisme de ces lieux. Il s'est mué en observateur engagé des États-Unis. Car à force de photographier les endroits les plus tristes, Matthew est devenu un citoyen, un acteur de la vie politique. Et il espère que ses compatriotes se ressaisiront le 3 novembre 2020, le jour où il faudra élire le président. <rires>